I am the museum educator at the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium, and I am going to be your guide to the wonderful world, the super world of super spiders for today. Um, it's 1030, so we're going to go ahead and uh, kick it off because we've got a lot of fun uh, spider adventures that we're going to have together today. So I want to make sure we get to everything because the last one of the last things we're going to do is actually feed one of our tarantulas today. So I hope everybody is excited. Uh, I have a, my helper Kelly is on the video with us today. She is going to be keeping an eye on the chat window. So if you have questions, keep uh, dropping them in there for us and uh, we'll make sure we come back to those at the very end. So we're gonna talk about uh, spider diversity. We're gonna talk about spider anatomy. We're gonna meet a couple of our spiders and then we'll end with a spider feeding and a spider trivia game. So that's sort of the what, what to expect and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, and we're gonna start actually with a little poll. Kelly's going to launch the poll. Um, and the, but the question is about how many species of spiders do you think there are in the world? And we're wondering, not individual spiders living out their lives, but number of species, number of types of spiders. So go ahead and fill that out. We'll get a few more folks uh, answering, then we'll We'll give you a couple of warning on when we're going to close that poll. How many of species of spiders do you think there are? I'll give you another 10 more seconds to, to fill in your, your answers. All right, let's see our results. So we had a bunch of folks in 500,000, some in 50, and then a couple down below. But we had most folks thinking that there are 50,000 species of spiders out there in the world. And I am happy to report that you guys are right. The, most, the majority of you guys were spot on, 50,000 species of spider. That's a heck of a lot of spiders out there. And when you have that many species of anything, you're going to have a lot of diversity. And so spiders are really a diverse type of animal. And these photos here are spiders that you can find just in Montana. A lot of these photos were sent to us at the insectarium by folks in the community hoping to get some IDs, um, identifications on these spiders. So we've got uh, some crab spiders on the left. Those are that's the white one and the, the yellow one. Those guys can actually change their color. They can go from white to yellow, um, and they will hide in flowers and try and grab onto pollinators that come to visit the flowers. We've got this banded garden spider that looks like looks like she's got a, a big juicy grasshopper. They're ones that make beautiful um, orb circular webs. Um, the tiny little guy next to the, the, that sort of stripy spider, that's a jumping spider. And that jumping spider has caught a fly. She's got a really big meal ahead of her. Um, they've got really good eyesight. They're really tiny, but you can see those eyes that go across their face like that. So they can see around them really pretty well. They've got a really great sense of, sense of sight and a great ability to jump and catch their prey. So. Um, We've got wolf spiders, that's down in the bottom corner. We've got the black widow, which a lot of you guys will probably recognize. You'll see that red hourglass on her abdomen. And then you'll see the male down below. It looks quite a bit different from the female. And so, uh, and then, oh, and then of course, the hobo spider that I know a lot of folks aren't a big fan of, but the good news is they're actually not as dangerous as their reputation. Um, would have you think. And so this is just a small sample of spiders that you can find in Montana. Uh, you can find spiders all around the world in all different kinds of habitats. You can find them in jungles, you can find them in deserts, you can find them in cold and hot, rainy, dry, all over the place. You can find them in, they're down to the tiniest little jumping spiders up to the 
the Goliath bird-eating tarantulas that are about 13 inches toe-to-toe -to -toe when they're full grown. So long story short, there's a, a whole ton of spiders out there and they're, and they're pretty amazing creatures. So we've talked about ways that they can be different. I want to talk about ways that spiders are the same. And so spiders, they're their anatomy is going to be, no matter if you're a big spider, little spider, you're going to have some anatomical features that are the same, that are consistent. So I wanted to talk, talk through those things. We're going to start with the two main sections of their body. And those are, that's the abdomen and then the cephalothorax. Cephalothorax, that's a big long word, but it's a very cool science um, science term for your Tuesday morning. Uh, you'll notice that all these legs are coming out of the cephalothorax, that front piece, and then that often the larger piece on the end, that's their abdomen. Um, and if you, if you, if you remember your, your insect body parts, they're gonna have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. That's one easy way you can tell a spider from an insect is it's sections of its body. Insects will have three, um, spiders are just gonna have two. Cephalothorax, abdomen. Another way you'll be able to tell is the number of legs. So spiders are gonna have eight legs, whereas insects, they're only gonna have six. And so you'll see that they've got four legs on each side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And again, they're coming out of the cephalothorax, and you'll notice that they are sort of a mirror image of each other. And actually, this whole spider, if you were to draw a line down its middle, you would notice that it's about the same, it's the same on both sides, and that's called bilateral symmetry. And that's one thing that we actually have in common with spiders. If you were to draw a line down me, I've got an eye on each side, my nose is in the middle, my mouth, I've got two ears. Uh, that's one thing that we have in common with spiders. We don't have a lot in common, but that's one thing we'll, we can give, we can have in common. So four legs on each side for this spider. The next thing is the spinnerets. Those are the parts of the spider where the silk comes out. And in a tarantula, like this picture that we're looking at, it often looks like two fingers kind of folded up onto the spider's abdomen and they will sort of fold down and put some silk down. When we meet Rosie, she's a tarantula. She has some spinnerets that are pretty easy to, to see and we'll, we'll take, a, take a look at that and point that out. So spinnerets coming out of the abdomen. Eyes, the next piece of the anatomy that I wanna talk about are the eyes. They um, are on the cephalothorax. They're really tiny in a lot of cases, or at least in this tarantula's case. Um, eight is probably the most common number of eyes that a spider can have, but they can have six, they can have four, they can have two, they can have up to 12 eyes and down to zero eyes. And uh, if you might be thinking, well, why in the world would a spider not have eyes? And it has to do with where they live. Um, cave spiders live underground there's no light coming in, and so there's no reason to have eyes. Our eyes work because light comes in, hits a special sensor, some cells that send a message to the brain, and if there's no light coming in, there's no reason for those eyes to be there. So they've evolved just to uh, essentially not bother with eyes. <laughs> uh, but most spiders are going to have eight eyes. All right, petty palps. Now, when I was counting legs, you might have said, but what about those two small leg-like things up in the front? And they do in a lot of cases, and in this case, they look like tiny legs, but they are not. They actually are used to help the spider eat. They help maneuver and manipulate the prey, and they're up sort of in the mouth area of the spider. So petty palps, that's probably another new word for a lot of folks. And then the chelicerae and the fangs are the next piece. And so what you're looking at from this top-down view, that's the chelicerae, that sort of fuzzy piece right where that arrow is pointing. And then the fangs are an extension. They come out of that area as well. Um, and we'll look at a picture of some fangs in a little bit. Um, but they are down there. That's how they are going to both defend themselves in certain cases and then also how they are going to subdue their prey. 
So these are the major pieces that all spiders are going to have. If you're a spider, you're going to have these, these body parts. All right, so it is time to meet Rosie, Rosie number two specifically. Um, I have a fancy camera that I'm going to turn on in just a second. I'm going to take her lid off um, and introduce you to Rosie. She's a Chilean rose hair tarantula. And she's a pretty, I think she's beautiful. She's a beautiful spider. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to switch my camera and there we go so there is rosie get a little closer to her so rosie is a chilean rose hair tarantula and so she's from chile she's got rose colored hair she's kind of got her legs um kind of bunched up a little bit uh but she has pinkish hairs you can kind of see them right above where my finger is if she when she moves her legs hopefully in a little bit you'll get to see that her hair is pretty pink up there um she has got i'll just point out her her body parts for you a little bit she's got got my laser pointer so i don't have to stick my fingers too close she's got one two three, four legs on that side. Then she's got one, two, three, four legs on that side. Her spinnerets are kind of this darkish area down here. I'll, I'll move the camera so you can see in a little bit. So that's where her spinnerets are. Her abdomen is right here. And then this is her cephalothorax. So that, that her pink hairs are on her cephalothorax. Now, another thing you might be noticing about, oops, let's get this in focus a little better. There we go. About her habitat is that it's got a lot of um, white fuzzy stuff on it and that is all of her silk. She also has a flower pot that I'm gonna move. She, it, you'll notice it's cut in half and it's kind of like a little dome. That is her house. So I'm gonna take that out so she, um, uh, doesn't go in there where you can't see her. And you'll notice she's, she moved a little bit. And that's because while she can't see very well, she can sense the world around her through vibrations. And so oh, she's on the move. She knows that I moved her house. Now you can see her pink hairs on the top there. Um, thanks Rosie for showing off a little bit. Um, She's showing you how she can walk now too. Um, now, she uses the, all of these beautiful white fuzzy silk pieces um, to sense the world around her. She wants to make sure that nothing sneaks up on her. And when a vibration happens on one corner of, this, of the of her home and it's on the, on the silk, the vibrations travel. Oh, you can see her, her spinnerets coming off the back of her abdomen. Um, but yeah, so that's, she's thinking about laying down some more silk. She knows that something's up, so she's a little on guard. Um, let's see if we can get closer to these spinnerets, but there you go. You can really see them sort of unfolding in the back there. <laughs> she knows something's up. Hopefully this means she'll eat for us shortly. Um, so those silk pieces tell her when something is around and um, whether that might be food or might be a predator that she wants to hide away from. So basically when I moved her house, she said something's up and she went to explore and she's come back into this part of her part of her terrarium. Now, uh, Rosie, <laughs> keeping my eye on her so we don't lose her, or lose track of her in the camera, I should say. Um, Rosie has not eaten in about a week, 
And so if you and I didn't eat for about a week, we would be starving. But Rosie is pretty used to it. That's about how often she eats. She often eats a cricket every Wednesday or Thursday. So it's actually been a little bit longer than a week for her. Um, but she doesn't need to eat food quite as often as we do. She is a, an ambush predator. She'll sit and wait and ambush her food or her prey as it comes along. And so she's not quite as active as, um, as you and I are. We're running around, we're playing soccer, we're wrestling with our siblings. Um, Rosie is more stationary. She sits and waits um, and will catch her prey as she needs to, but as a result, she doesn't have to eat all the time. So she's quite content with a cricket a week and even less sometimes if she needs to. Um, so, but one thing that we do have in common is that with Rosie is that we both, when humans eat and when spiders eat, they've got a big piece of food in front of them and they need to make it smaller to get inside their bodies. But that's about where the similarities end. Rosie does not have a mouth like we do. She's got fangs and she's got a small mouth that we'll talk about in a little bit more in a minute. I'll show you a photo. Uh, but Rosie, like I said, she's gonna sit, she's gonna wait, and she's gonna ambush the prey that comes in front of her, and she is going to catch it in her fangs, and she's going to pierce that prey with her fangs, and she's gonna inject venom into that cricket and to subdue it, to, to paralyze it. And then she's gonna start moving her fangs up and down, sort of smushing up the prey. On the sides of her chelicerae, she's got little bumps, little teeth that help her smush up the prey. And once it's kind of in a smushy ball, she will actually stand over it with her mouth and she will secrete enzymes, stomach juices, that will break down the cricket and liquefy it, turn it into a liquid. From there, she will slurp it up in through her mouth into her stomach. It is a cricket smoothie. Um, it is, it is a, it's a process called exodigestion and it's way different from how we eat. Um, we smush up the food with our teeth, we swallow it, and then once it's in our stomach, those stomach juices, those enzymes will break it down. But um, the spiders, they need to do that before it goes into their body. So exodigestion, they are digesting, more or less digesting their food outside of their body and then bringing it inside. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys one more time because I wanted to show you a photo. So now, I said that she has a mouth, Rosie's a mouth under her body. I don't wanna pick her up and flip her over and show it to you because that would make her stressed out and make me stressed out. But I can show you this photo. <laughs> this is a tarantula that is trying to scare you away. It is up on its back legs. It's showing off its fangs. And so you can see those really sharp fangs that I was telling you about. Now, where that yellow circle is, that's where her mouth is, sort of in that, that, that void there. And so she'll catch the prey with her fangs, she'll smush it up with her, the teeth on her chelicerae here, and then the stomach juices will come in, or they'll come out of that, the area where that yellow circle is, and they'll liquefy the food, and then the food goes, the prey goes inside. So that's a little closer. It's probably closer than most of us wanna be to a, <laughs> to a tarantula's fangs, but, um, I appreciate this photo a lot because it's, it's easier to show um, just where that mouth is, right in that area. So I'm gonna stop sharing so that Rosie's, uh, Rosie is front and center. What I'm going to do is I've got crickets in, the, in a little container here, uh, and I'm gonna put one in. It's gonna walk along the silk Rosie is going to sense the vibrations. She is going to, hopefully she's hungry, she's gonna pounce on it with her fangs. And that whole initial process of Rosie catching her prey is actually gonna be pretty fast. 
uh, just a few seconds. So, so no blinking, you don't want to miss it. Um, and um, after that, it, she's going to go through the process of digesting. Sometimes you'll see her move her fangs up and down um, to smush it up. And sometimes she'll even walk around laying down new silk so that she can sense the world around her a little bit better and not get um, have anybody sneak up on her while she is distracted eating. So here we go. Here comes the cricket. So the cricket is in this corner and it's running away from her. So hold tight. I'm actually going to rotate so that I'm a little closer. So you guys have a better view so you can see the cricket there. All right, cricket. Are you hungry, Rosie? Oh, <laughs> she went for it. So like I said, that initial attack on the cricket is pretty quick. So she's got the cricket in her fangs right now. Right now you're seeing her tilus, sorry, the top, so the top piece of her fangs. And she's got it in there. She sort of moved her petty palps a little bit. And now remember how I said she might move around and put some silk down? They don't always do that, but often. So she's, oh, she might move around a little bit. Brenna, our bug wrangler, calls this her happy dance because she's happy because she's got um, some food. So I'm going to actually get a different view for you guys. I'm trying to get a little closer. <laughs> so now she, you can really, from here, you can really, oops, you can really see her fang or her spinnerets, those black pieces on her abdomen. Hoping that we could show you her, her cricket a little bit. Let's look a little bit. No, no. She's got it in her fang. She likes hanging out in this front corner. There's a little bit of a, a hill there. <laughs> so yeah, so she's got her cricket in her fangs. She's every now and then she's moving her fangs, her chelicerae up and down. And um, she's just going to be like that. That she can be like that for quite a while, actually. A um, couple hours, maybe, digesting her food. Oh, there she goes. You can see her petty palps moving to adjust the cricket. She's moving her fangs up and down a little bit. Um, so. All right, I will leave the camera on Rosie while we go to the last pieces, last piece of our program before we get to questions. Uh, let's see. I'm going to share my screen again and we're going to play a little game. We are going to play spider trivia. So these are true and false, true or false questions. And Kelly's going to launch the poll, and we'll give you a little bit of time, and we'll see how we do. So first one, true or false, spider blood is blue in color. True or false? True or false, spider blood is blue in color. Good job. Give me another five seconds to answer this one. Good job, everyone. It's a pretty neck and neck race. Ooh. All right. So in the end, the trues have it and you guys are correct. Spider blood is blue in color. Um, and technically it's called hemolith and it is blue. So that is a, a fun trivia fact for you guys. Let's 
skedaddle on to the next question. True or false, spiders don't stick to their own webs because of special oils in their feet. True or false, spiders don't stick to their own webs because of special oils in their feet. A few more seconds, you guys are doing a great job. True or false, spiders don't stick to their own webs because of special oils in their feet. All right, I think we'll go ahead and call that one. All right, we've got a lot of you guys saying true, a few folks saying false, and the answer for this one is actually false. We, if false is the answer to this one. Now spiders, it is true that spiders don't stick to their own webs, but the reason is not because of special oils in their feet, it's because of all the different types of, sil of silk that they can make. Now spiders can make about nine types of silk, most spiders I should say, and some of those silks are sticky to catch prey. Some silks are not. Some silks are meant to cement the web to whatever it's being built on. Some of, it, some of the silk is structural. Some of it uh, is used for egg sacs. Some of it, in, like in Rosie's situation, is meant for building up their burrow and, and sensing predators around. So, um, yeah, so their spiders are just smart little creatures. They know which parts of their webs are sticky and they know which are not and they avoid the sticky parts. All right, last one for you guys. True or false, daddy long legs are the most venomous spider in the world, but their fangs are too small to bite you. you hear, we talk about this one a lot. What do you think? Is that true? Is it true that daddy long legs are the most venomous spiders in the world, but their fangs are too small to bite you? True or false? All right, a few more seconds, and we'll go ahead and wrap it up. We'll talk about daddy long legs. We're pretty close on this one. All right, so yeah, so we had a few folks saying, most of you guys were saying false, but a good number of you were saying true, and I understand where that's coming from because I've heard this one a lot, but it is actually false, and this usually, uh, blows people's minds. They, they're really surprised that this is a, an old wives tale, an old myth. Um, daddy long legs are, um, they're not even technically spiders. Uh, spiders have two very defined sections of their body, right? We talked about the cephalothorax and we talked about the abdomen. And if you think about what a daddy long legs look like, looks like, it kind of looks like a ball with legs coming out. Now they are related to spiders. They do have eight legs. They are arachnids, but they are not technically spiders. So they can't be the world's most venomous spider. Um, now the second piece of, to this question is that, well, there are, most of them aren't even venomous at all. <laughs> they don't have venom and they don't have fangs. They have mouth parts that are closer to what a scorpion has that chews things up a bit more. Um, so no venom or most cases, no venom, certainly not strong venom, um, no fangs. And the only piece of this that's true is that their mouth is probably too small to break your skin. Um, so long story short, we've got, um, a spider or a, an arachnid, a daddy long legs that is not venomous and not dangerous. <laughs> um, so that is the end of our uh, formal presentation, but I will switch the camera back to me, to my face, so that I can answer any questions that you guys might have had. Carolyn? We have a few questions we were hoping you could answer for us. Um, the first one is about that slide. You had all those different spiders, but a lot of them were from Montana, you said. Mm -hmm. And we had a question about which of those spiders presented on that slide are actually venomous. 
Ah, so all of, all of them is the short okay. answer. <laughs> um, all, all spiders except for one, except for one um, family of spiders, one group of spiders are gonna have venom of some kind. So wow. the, almost every type of spider of that 50,000 that 50, number I mentioned, most of them are going to have venom. And often that question comes from people wanting to know about dangerous spiders, right. and venom, venom that's gonna hurt us. And of those, only the, really the black widow is one that I would worry about. Um, the black widow does have really strong venom, and, but the good news is that she wants to avoid, she doesn't want to deal with you. <laughs> she wants to hide. She uh, would rather run away. If she's protecting an egg case, she might um, bite you if she felt like she had no, um, uh, no other option. Right, like um, a deep, yeah. Yeah, if, she's, if she feels like she's cornered. But the other spiders, they're gonna have, they're gonna have venom because they need to catch their prey. Um, but, uh, the black widow is the only one. And that's actually a great reason to introduce <laughs> our black widow here. Cool. So she's my bonus spider. <laughs> um, if, if we had time, I wanted to show her off. Now, I, a thing you'll notice about her, she's she's hiding underneath a leaf and that's mm -hmm. often where you'll find them. They'll, they'll be underneath things, underneath mm -hmm. logs, well, not logs, but if they're on the ground, but underneath benches or underneath, um, thing shelves in an old garage or a barn that's often where you'll find them uh, and they've got that uh, from that slide you remember she was sort of upside down and then that red hourglass was on her abdomen but facing right. up the sky she's trying to scare away predators and that's usually for her birds big things above her gotcha yeah cool um, a question about spiders and their eyes and specifically do spiders have eyelids like we do I don't know. That's a great question. I have not, I don't know about eye, spider eyelids specifically. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I never thought about it. That's a, I hadn't thought about it either. <laughs> um, but I'm going to write that down. Sweet. Good research question. It's a great research question. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll look it up. I don't know. Cool. Um, and then a question about the petty palps. Mm -hmm. Uh, can they also, or do they also use them kind of like cleaning hands for their face? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen our spiders sort of tuck a leg underneath their petty palps and by their fangs. Um, and I know that they will sort of manipulate them that way. Okay. Um, yeah, I would, I think so. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can actually also be used for reproduction in the males. They're so, oh. sort of versatile um, little body parts. Interesting. Um, with Rosie's species specifically, are they uh, terrestrial or do they end, ever end up in trees or are they strictly on the ground? That's a good question. She's a ground spider. She, she is, um, she, sorry, I'm watching her move around a little <laughs> bit. She is, uh, she is a terrestrial spider. There are tarantulas that are arboreal that live mm -hmm. in trees. We have two of those in our lab. Um, and they do live up in trees, but Rosie specifically is a, she's a ground spider. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then a uh, question about her enclosure. We saw rocks in her water bowl and we had a few wonderings about why or what purpose, if any, do those rocks serve in the water bowl? That's a good question. We have those rocks in there actually to keep her safe so she doesn't accidentally fall in and, and drown. Um, gotcha. The idea is that the water goes between the rocks and she can stand on the rocks, drink the water from between the rocks, but never actually fall all the way in. So that's, that's the idea. It's a pretty common thing you'll see in, in tarantula. Gotcha. In so it's for her own safety, it sounds like. <laughs> yep. And she doesn't seem to notice or care about them. She's yeah. got plenty of water and she lives in the desert. So she's got more water here than she probably sure. would usually have access to. So she's <laughs> She's a spoiled uh, little lucky, lucky little spider. <laughs> um, we have another question that just came in. Can spiders hear and can they sense sound? I know you talked a little bit about using those vibrations, but. Yeah. Can they all? Um, I know that some jumping spiders will drum. The males will actually drum mm -hmm. um, on the surface to uh, communicate with females. Huh. Um, I'm not sure how common that is, though. I, I think that specifically is um, 
uh, how jumping spiders communicate. But in terms of sending, sensing vibrations, that's their primary, primary way that they're gonna sense the okay. world around them. And then I just saw, uh, do spiders hunt things bigger than themselves? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, yes. So if you remember that first slide or one of the earlier slides with all the different pictures, mm -hmm. uh, that jumping spider, she caught a big, a big fly. Um, typically, though, they're going to catch something that's about the size of their abdomen or smaller. Okay. That's sort of a good general rule to, to think about. Um, but sometimes are they going to go, you know, give it a shot and go for something big? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're hungry enough. <laughs> you're hungry enough. Yeah. I mean, that, even that banded, uh, banded garden spider, she had a pretty big juicy grasshopper. Oh, yeah. Um, still smaller than her, but and probably actually the size of her abdomen about. Um, yeah. But they can definitely go for bigger things. Most of the time, it'll, it'll be a little bit smaller, though. Okay. And then I just saw two last questions popped up, and maybe we'll just address those and then call it a day. Okay. Uh, what is the largest spider recorded? Ah, so uh, that is the Goliath bird-eating tarantula. And, that, and that's actually by mass, so by overall heft and weight, and, and not necessarily by leg span. Gotcha. So, she, so we have one of those. Her name is Polly. Uh, mm -hmm. She And so when, if, when they're full grown, they can be about 13 inches toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Wow. And that's pretty big. So a dinner plate is about 12 to 13 inches. So when you have dinner wow. tonight with your family, you can say there's a spider out there. <laughs> that is this big. <laughs> this big. That's one of my favorite um, comparisons to make because that's it's big. And Polly, we have Polly. She's 10, 10 to 12-ish years. We, we recently wow. were thinking about how old she is. Um, and, yeah, she's, she's, a, she's an old lady. Um, but she can live <laughs> to be about 12, 25 years old, we think. So, wow. so we'll have her for a long time. That's crazy. Uh, but she, we don't know that she's full grown yet, and we haven't really haven't gotten a measure, you know, yeah. stuck a ruler in with her yet. Yeah, that's kind of... <laughs> we leave her alone, alone. Yeah, I would. I don't blame you. Uh, and then maybe these last questions about hairs. Yes. Um, do all spiders have hairs? And kind of what, what are those hairs? What purpose do those serve? So spiders, different spiders will have different things on their bodies. So that if you think about a black widow, she's pretty smooth and sleek. She mm -hmm. might have some hairs in her joints or I'm not quite sure. I, I don't want to necessarily say that she has right. any yeah. hairs, but you don't think of her as a hairy spider, whereas Rosie, she's really hairy. Um, then those hairs on Rosie, she can use them for a lot of different things. Um, she can use them. She's got like, hairs that have split ends upon split ends upon split ends um, on her toes, and those can help her, her climb. Um, okay. And then some of the hair, and they can help her sense vibrations, and then some of her hairs on her back, on her abdomen, she can actually kick off and they get really itchy and they kind of, for adults, they feel like fiberglass is on your skin. Wow. It's really, yeah. really itchy. Um, and so if she's upset and she's scared at a predator or something, she'll kick those off. Um, and a lot of tarantulas from North and South America can, can do that. So Polly has hairs. Polly's kicked her hairs off at us. <laughs> we were wow. trying to clean her terrarium and she wasn't happy. She so, wasn't having it. <laughs> no, she was not interested. Um, <laughs> we were saying, we're cleaning your room and she said, I don't want you to clean nope. <laughs> um, So yes, that's a great question. So a lot of spiders will have hairs and they will use them differently. Great. Well, I learned a ton. I hope you guys did too out there. Thank you so much for joining us, Carolyn. Thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge and sharing some of the spiders with us so we get to see them. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Cool. Bye, Bye. guys.